this is a viable project and it can move forward is none, uh, none sorry, excuse me, um, one, having uh, an analysis saying that what we're putting forward is viable and is uh, financially possible. And two, that the property that we're putting it on is an appropriate property to put it on or that it's actually available. They're not going to be as willing to move forward with us if we're gonna to have to go through eminent domain because that might be one or two years all on its own. And a lot of these funds are being uh, stripped from the state so if they can't move forward quickly on the project, they just won't move forward with it at all. Hopefully that answers the question. Well, we kind of went from a May half to a half to half. So. And maybe I misspoke before. This okay. is something that we have, the okay. analysis is something we have to have. This is required. It, will, it is have. required to move okay. forward. Okay, all right, okay. Uh, we could potentially use the model that we have. However, it is proven to be highly inaccurate at this point. There's a, there's a lot of discrepancies that need to be resolved. And if we're going to use it to move forward with this type of project, then it really needs to be updated in order to have the most accurate information. I have one more that. question. With the yeah. state $68 billion deficit, what do you think the chances yeah. of these grants coming through? So the grant funds that we're awarded and that we go after are federally backed grant funds that are pre, pre allotted at the beginning of the year. So at the beginning of the, the state fiscal year in September or October or whatever they choose each year, um, they, the, state, the federal government funds the state a certain amount of billions of dollars for these programs. So if the state's guaranteed that money, it doesn't get pulled away. The, the only money that will get pulled away from the state is federally managed money, which um, we do get some of that money, but this particular money is not that money. So the state has already um, awarded everything for the Clean Water uh, Clean Water State Revolving Fund, which ironically is wastewater. But um, so some of that money has already been reduced. The the Drinking Water State Revolving Fund, which is this money, doesn't get reduced until the beginning of the next fiscal year. So if they don't use, or if they don't unlock something, then it'll go away. So if we're asking for a million dollars and they would have awarded it, but they didn't because we weren't on top of what we needed to do, that money could go away. But as soon as they agree to move forward with the project, that money is held there until they for sure identify <laughs> that we are going forward or we can't go forward. Does that make sense? A little shaky, but yeah, I kind of get it. So, I mean, we're, we're hoping the state can't figure out a way to spend these federal funds on something else. So, they, that's the one thing about this program, the clean water and the drinking water side of this program, this program, is that that money is tied up and the state can't take it for anything else. They have to use it for that. Uh, and they are very happy to spend every dollar that they get because that means they get more next year. Um, but like I said, each year, the federal government reevaluates how much they got. If they didn't use it appropriately or didn't use it, then it gets cut. If they need more, then they'll end up getting more. But as far as the district is concerned, then if once the state agrees, say they're gonna give us, give us a million dollars, once they agree to that, we're, that's ours until either we give it back or we prove that we can't do it somehow. Anything else? I'm good. You good? Good? No, I'm good. You're good. Okay. I have no questions. I'm good. I got a couple of questions. Certainly. Uh, number one, one of my questions is we spent uh, almost ten thousand dollars to have that fifty thousand gallon tank looked at. What are the results? Um, I don't have them right in front of me, but basically the results are that the entire thing needs to be recoded. Um, there's a lot of structural problems with the roof. The, the hatches are, well, one of the hatches was just torched head into the top and cobbled back together. So there's a lot of structural problems with the roof. That's the, the main issue. Um, it doesn't meet current safety standards. 
So if, if we were to do any sort of major repair to it, we would have to bring it up to current safety standards, which is uh, involves uh, a caged uh, ladder and uh, railing and tie-offs on the roof. Um, so I mean, those are the major things. I don't have a cost on how much that would cost to fix. Yeah, we're a little off topic here too. You know, that's not what we're trying to sure. do with this. With we are thing. too. We're talking about the solution. We're talking about the, the booster. We're talking about the booster pump. That's, yes. Booster. All right. Okay. The booster pump and that tank up there by where the booster pump is going to go is relevant to it. The top of it has everything to do with the booster pump. If you'd like to come talk to me about the yeah. no, tank no, because we've talked before, and I get different stories from you. Okay, when we were talking about putting a booster pump in that location and utilizing that 50,000 gallon tank, you said, oh, I can't do it because I have to mix the water from the other wells into that. And then you come up and say, well, the arsenic level's down on this well and so on and everything. Now, which, which, which one is it? Because like I said, the problem all along has been there isn't enough pressure for the fire safety should there be a fire on uh, the terrace and there there's no pressure okay so you put a there's no reason why you can't put a booster pump in for the, they'll have the pressure on the terrace with what we have here you know, and ideally that uh, 50,000 gallon tank, are you saying it's, it's not usable? In regard to the tank, we had a report done. I'd be more than happy to talk to you about that yeah. at my office Yeah. at some future date or time that this analysis would give more concrete evidence of where that booster pump should be located, whether it's at the existing tank like you propose, or if it's by the bridge, like I propose, or if it's somewhere else altogether. That, that is actually what this analysis is going to do. So the engineer will look at it, they'll model each individual scenario, and provide a, a report based on the actual facts and modeling of where it's going to be most beneficial and where it's going to be most cost effective to build it. Right, but I, I think we should concentrate on the booster pump <coughs> so we have pressure for the terrace in case there's a fire up there. That's what we're trying to do. I know. Well, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Okay. You know, but you're, yeah, but you're, you're talking about trying to buy property somewhere. We have the, uh, the way, way you told me, we have uh, an easement on where that 50,000 gallon tank set right now. So, to be clear, we have an easement for that tank. Right. It is the exact same size as that tank. There is no space around that tank. If we were to buy or get property to build a booster, st a booster station at or near that tank, we would have to buy it or take it by imminent domain. Either way, it is a very lengthy process. Either way, we still need to have an analysis done showing where the most appropriate place is to put this booster station. That is going to be required for this grant as a subject of this grant. Uh, so either we do it ahead of time or we do it ahead of time. We don't have a choice. We can do it now or we can wait and do it later. As Mr. Berkeley suggested, we put it into the, the budget for next year. However, that does put us to at least 10 months behind and it does sort of hold, to, hold everything up. It is not impossible. I mean, we can make it work, but that's up to the board on whether they want to spend the money now or spend the money later. I don't see a huge cost difference between now and later. Hopefully that answers your question. <clears throat> Anything else, Dr. Davis? No. Right. Public comment? Brandon Patterson? 
Uh, where is the funding for this new project coming from largely? They, this particular item or for the booster station? For the booster station, because you said this wasn't already on the existing budget, so where is the money going to come from? So this money, the money for this project, for this particular item would come from the reserve, being reimbursed by the grant. Okay, so you're hoping you'll get reimbursed in the grant. If you don't, where is the money going to come from? Just from our reserve? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Any other public comment? Hey, uh, Daniel. Uh, I'd just like to say that you know I've been to a few of these meetings, followed a few uh, a few of these items that are similar to this. And um, as uh, Mr. Dodd said, you know we can delay this eight to ten months until a new budget comes up. But what we've seen time and time again is cost of doing things goes up. So delaying this could end up costing the district more money in the long term. And I mean, obviously there seem to be some issues with this tank. There are obviously issues with flow. So I'm going to come back to say what's for the good of the community would be to address this in a timely manner. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, at this time I um, entertain a motion to adopt resolution 2023-55. Is that, is that your motion? No, no, I said no, I entertained a no. motion. All right. Okay, I'll motion. Mm -hmm. okay. Resolution 23-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-3-
we would have to provide the documentation stating that we're not going to adversely infect or affect the floodplain elevation of the river because of the percolation ponds that we want to build. Bear in mind that we're not building above grade, they're all at grade, but we still have to have an analysis showing that what we're doing isn't adversely affecting the floodplain. Um, with the recent storms in January and proposed storms, the county and FEMA are at the lowest level possible willing to budge on this at all. Um, so essentially, Avalon Associates would be performing the hydrology and hydraulic analysis showing the effects of our proposed grading changes on the floodplain elevation for the area immediately around the plant, but also uh, down south towards past rubbles for everything that could be, in, could be impacted by changes to our plant. I anticipate that most likely they're going to say that it's either no impact or very little impact, um, but nonetheless, we still have to have this report showing showing that we did the work. Um, so this, this is part of the wastewater treatment plant, an extension and upgrade. So it would be attributed to that budget item. It does not have a budget for it currently. So this would be added capital expense uh, to that project. Uh, because this is part of that project, as part of our normal updates to the state, because this planning uh, grant is part of all right, this planning money is part of a grant that we're going to have from the state. Uh, they've been very helpful in updating our process and updating what this grant covers. So if this is approved, then it'll be a part of a discussion with the state to hopefully in, uh, fold this into that grant and get reimbursed for this cost. However, I couldn't sit here today and tell you that that's 100% guaranteed. Um, there is some other cost savings that are sort of trickling down from other designs, so it's possible that this would just be filling in some gaps that we're saving money in. But um, hopefully this would be covered by the state, uh, the grant we already have. Okay. Thank you, Kelly. Um, Dr. Beaker, do you have a comment? Oh, it just sounds like we have to do it. Unfortunately. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I just know, you know, I, I was doing the, the expansion project and it's just a foreseeable expenses come up and it's the ugly truth, a lot of this engineering and things like that, that's, um, yeah, so I don't, I don't, I understand, I don't like it, but I understand, yes. Yeah. Well, and this is, this is coming to you now after months of me fighting it, trying to get out of it. Okay. So I really don't want to do this. I don't. I think yeah. it's just a waste of time and money. But yeah. it's something that they're going to require, and if we don't show it, we're definitely not getting a permit. Right. Right. So. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> um, Dr. Collins. Anything? Dr. Davis. Yeah, I just got a couple of questions. Now, it, how many percolation ponds are you going to need after the the upgrade of the uh, new treatment plant? So we currently have three percolation right, ponds, right. and we're proposing three more percolation ponds of a similar size. So I think. I think the acreage of the new percolation ponds is about 1.7 acres. Um, I, don't, I don't think that's exactly the number, but it's something like that. So it, it takes up about half of the property that we have to the north. Right, and then the three per ponds that are there are going to be done. You're no, not. Gonna, they're going to be there too. You're gonna, so you're going to use. You're going to have six per pond. Yes. Okay. Now. Did I understand right? Because it's lower on the north end of these perk ponds than these perk ponds are. Are you going to have to build that up? Or? Yes. So it'll be roughly at the same elevation as the current perk Current perk. Okay. So you're going to have six perk ponds. Yes. So. All right. That, that just a question. Because I 
I didn't know if he was going to uh, do away with the three and put three more in. Or, but you're going to need six per ponds, correct? At the full build out, we'll need six. Six. Okay. So you're just adding three more to the current three? Yes. Okay. Is it Director Davis? Yes. Okay. Public comment? Anyone? Seeing none. Um, I'd entertain a motion to adopt the resolution 2023-54. I'll move to adopt resolution number 2023-54. And I'll second. <laughs> I have a motion on the floor by Director Baker to approve resolution 2023-54, second by Director Smiley. <coughs> Director Collins? Yes. Director Baker? Yes. Director Davis? Yes. Director Gregory? Yes. President Smiley? Yes. Passes five, zero, no passes. Okay, I have six. Continuation of the discussion and potential action regarding the adoption of water rates from the September 28, 2023 board meeting pursuant to Article 8D of the California Constitution that San Miguel Community Services District is continuing the discussion regarding the protest ballots submitted and will consider taking action to update the rate structure and increase the rates for the water services. <coughs> So yes, this is a, a return from multiple previous meetings. Um, some of the information that uh, Director Baker had asked for is, is shown on this report. Um, he and I had met to discuss this. And one of the things that he had asked for in our meeting was, and I think in the board meeting, was to look at what, what it would cost if 100% of the fixed fee or the fixed charges were the fixed fee. So all of our charges, whether we sold any water or not, were in the fixed fee. Um, based on the discussion with uh, Barbara Wells, basically that amounts to $83.51 per month for a fixed fee and 50 cents per unit after that. Um, it's a little bit different than what you and I talked about. Yeah, quite a bit, like yeah, twice as much, only yeah. twice as much. Um, and I was honestly a little bit shocked when he told me that. Because what uh, Director Baker and I were doing on, at my office basically amounted to like a $36 fee, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but we were missing a little bit of what was kind of everywhere else. Um, one of the other questions was regarding the $98,000 from the fiscal year 22-23 budget that wasn't spent. Um, and if that was factored into the calculation for this, for this five-year estimate. Um, we looked at that, or I looked at that with Portal Wells. Basically, it wouldn't appreciably, appreciably fit, affect the first four years, but it could uh, lead to about a 64 cent uh, per service per month reduction in the fifth year. Um, and obviously that would be contingent on spending being within our budget and or additional savings through those four years. Um, uh, the other thing that he had asked for or that we discussed rather was um, the, the reserves that we had um, basically at the end of October and what we had at the end of October in 2018. So in the report, it shows our water operational cash was at $400,666 compared to a negative $178,500 uh, at the end of October 2018. Um, operational reserve was $155,695 at the end of October of this year compared to $53,249 at the end of October in 2018. And capital reserves is $165,693 at the end of October 2023, and compared to $56,657 at the end of October 2018. So there's an appreciable increase, uh, most notably in the operational cash, which is a direct result of 
the, the rate increase. Um, that's basically the information that was requested. Hopefully that answers your questions on that one right here. Um, he did ask for some additional information. Um, I didn't bring a copy for everybody, but uh, regarding our reserves from the last, uh, from 2017 to 2013, um, basically our unrestricted reserve that can be used for operational expenses without much trouble uh, went from $304,475 in 2017, and this year we have $491,229 in that unrestricted operational cash. Um, and the question that came up was in our uh, reserve policy, and as I've stated numerous times before, the goal for operational or unrestricted funds is to get to a million dollars, which would basically cover an entire year of our budget. Um, I say that 491,000, we're roughly at 50% of that. It's projected that we are going to be um, pretty close to a million dollars at the end of this five years, you know, barring any unforeseen expenses. I don't know if you had a chance to review that one. So I appreciate the information. Um, so if you have any additional questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Can um, I start? You don't want yeah, to go yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. OK, so I just did some quick math on this $83 uh, month fixed fee um, times 904 users times 12, that comes to $904,000. And fixed fees, our total revenue for last year was $1 million. So I don't believe for a second our fixed fees are 90% of our, our expenses without pumping any water. That's, that's absurd. That's electricity. I mean, that's, I, and I really don't have a lot of faith in this water study because I'm looking at the information that they use for the assumption they have an expense for this past year of $913,000 or our actual out-of-pocket expenses for like $768,000. So that's why I was asking for actual numbers versus these budget numbers. Um, the community here, like we said, total unrestricted funds, 2019, a negative 128,000, up to today, 491,000. Got $619,000 of reserves this community has paid in four years. And on top of some other fees that we talked about earlier, that's an incredible amount of money that this, these people have paid. And I think the IHA, I think their our rates are maybe too high. I like the concept of having a fixed fee and then having people pay what amount they use. I, I like that concept, but I think this $80, it, it, it's absurd. I like to see the detail on how they came up with that number, because that is ridiculous. There's no way. As you told me what your cost, their variable cost per unit was. <laughs> if we're averaging 10 units per household <coughs> times that number, it's, it would make our expenses more like $2 million. So I, it's, I, you know, this, this, I have no confidence really in this study. I want to see the people in this community get a great service. I think the rates are too high. I think they've been paying out the nose. Again, four years, 400. And $619,000 in reserves in four years this community has paid above the cost of delivering their water, above the cost of expenses for every, paying everything else. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. And these people need a break. So I think this thing needs to be reviewed and restructured. I don't think we need an increase this year based on We'll have to look at, we look at these, these budgets, but we're, our, but our, when we, when do we grow? 
that is at 274, you know, like 220,000 $220, dollars from last year to this year in the reserve. I mean, that's um, I this needs to be examined, in my opinion, very carefully, very carefully, and. Uh, we need a break. I think our water rates are, are too high and the, the structure needs to be changed. Right now, it's actually the structure to discourage people to use water. And if it, to me, if you want to make money, let's sell more water. Let's encourage people. Let's get a fixed rate that's reasonable and lower our per unit cost. Because I think this community would benefit if we had some green grass and some more trees and some more shrubs and sell more water, not, you know, jack up. Because the way it works now, if there's another drought and you've got a small fixed cost and all your money is in that per unit cost and they say you have to reduce water, they're going to be losing money. So the only way you're going to recover is to really increase that, that per unit fee. So, um, yeah, I think it needs to be changed. I think these people need a break. Does that conclude your remarks? Right now. Okay. Very nice. yeah. So, yeah, I mean, the whole, <clears throat> what we were trying to do was to lower, you know, for the lower income, especially because it seemed like that base rate was just so high. So, you know, I, um, I, uh, I hear you, um, Director Baker, and um, this is such an important issue that, you know, if we need to take more time, but, um, Maybe there needs to be, could the, could your guide misunderstand what you're asking for? Did the, when he, because that does seem crazy, but that doesn't sound right at all. So it's, that's an average for everybody if everybody was paying the same. So that wouldn't necessarily be the case. This yeah. isn't this isn't a totally worked out. It's just a, an average. Yeah, I understand. But so some uh, people pay more and all that kind of stuff and everything. So but the commercial or larger meters would be presumably paying more as they do now. How many how many commercial meters do we have? Do we think um, I think we we don't 30, have Gallo, right? No, I think we have thirty five or thirty eight. You know, two inch and larger meters. <coughs> Okay. Are they paying substantially more? The six inch meter is paying six to seven hundred dollars a month. The two inch meter I think is about a hundred. Tell you exact. Um, so the two inch two inch meter is hundred and thirty dollars a month at our current rate. The six inch meter is seven hundred and twenty two dollars a month. So give me an example of a six inch meter. So the, there's only two, one at the school and one at, one at White Oak Park. Oh, okay. okay. Um, there's, there's several two-inch meters around town that are part of commercial properties or part of um, 